We're going to start today with some shoulder curls. Basically, we're going to do a lot of kind of standing work and we're going to do some thoracic work and some twists as well. So we're going to warm up the upper body and then we're also going to warm up the lower body as well. So for uh, thoracic curls, what we do is we hug ourselves in towards the chest. We've done these ones before. We're going to tuck our chin and then round down to the front. So if you guys all want to do this with me and then we'll move on to our scap curls afterwards. So we're hugging ourselves. We're going to tuck the chin round forward. You can do these standing or seated if you prefer. We're going to twist out towards the right hand side. And then we're going to drop that right shoulder down and try to lift that left side of the rib cage up towards the ceiling, getting a really nice big stretch here. We're going to tilt backwards, trying to lift that chest up towards the ceiling and around. We're trying to keep the hips really steady here. So it's just that upper section of our spine that's moving. And now we're into a bend on that left side, getting a nice big stretch here. So it's almost as if we're drawing a circle with our head and with our shoulders. We're going to drop the right shoulder over the left thigh to get that rotation through the, the torso. And then we're going to curl forward into that forward fold again. And then coming back up. We're going to get you guys to reach out again and swap hands. And we're going to go the other direction. Tucking that chin, curling forward. We're going to rotate out towards the left, try and keep the hips really steady. That's nice. Now drop that left shoulder down, right shoulder up, go into that side bend. We're going to reach back up and around, just be mindful of the lower back. We're trying to open that chest up towards the ceiling as we rotate ourselves around and we're going into that side bend onto our right hand side. Try to bring the left shoulder over your right thigh now, so twisting out towards the right. And then we're going to curl forward, down into our forward fold and coming back up. Scalp curls are next. Basically, they're just moving our shoulders. So I'm going to go to the side and you guys are more than welcome to, to do this as well. You want to imagine that your hand is resting on a shelf in front of you and all we want to do is move that shoulder blade up and down, side to side like this. So again, just imaginary resting that onto a shelf. I'm going to get you to lift the shoulder up towards the ear. Then keeping it high, we're going to try and slide that shoulder blade back. Keep the arms super straight. Drop the shoulder blade down now. So we're trying to slide that shoulder blade down our cage and then let it come forward. We're going to do that two more times. Up towards the ear, back, down, slide it down the shoulder blade. If you're like me, you might have a few crunches. <laughs> slide it forward. One more time, up towards the ear, back. Try and think about wrapping that shoulder blade back in the range, sliding it down the rib cage, and then coming forward. We're going to go the opposite way. So slide it back, up, forward, and then down. We we'll do that again. Back, up, forward, and down. One more time, back, up, forward, down. And then we're going to change over onto the other side. So again, I'll just rotate around so you guys can see. Hand on that imaginary shelf. Be really mindful that the elbow doesn't bend. So we just want this moving just coming from the shoulder bit. Shoulder up towards the ear. Slide that shoulder back. Slide the shoulder down. Forward. And we're going to do that two more times. Up. Back. Down. Forward. Last time in this direction. Up. Back. Down and forward, let's reverse it. So slide that shoulder blade back, slide it up towards the ear, forward, and then down. Again, be mindful of the rib cage not moving. So sometimes we like to throw the rib cage around as well, but it's just like the shoulder curves where we're trying to keep this really steady and adjust the our shoulder blade that's moving. We that last rep now. Bring it forward, and then bring it down. You can just roll out the shoulders, a couple of reps forward, and then a couple of reps back. We're going to do our hip curls next. We're going to be in a quadruped position. If you want, you can have a tennis ball and you can put this in behind the knee. So in between the calf and the, the hamstring. And what that's going to do is it's going to make you engage this portion of the back of your leg a little bit more <clears throat> and really keep that nice knee flexion in it. So I'm going to see, hopefully this doesn't <laughs> slip out with my leg and we're going to try if you don't have one handy, don't worry about it. But we're going to start with that right leg. Again, keeping the core tight. So we're really trying to think about tucking in that lower abdomen, being nice and steady through the torso. And we're going to push that foot up towards the ceiling. 
bring that knee out towards the side. Try and keep the hips really flat now and let's rotate the knee to point forward and bring that up towards our elbow and then back in. Watch the tailbone tucking under here. And then we're going to go back to that starting position and let's reverse it. Knee comes up towards the chest. Nice. Lift it up and out to the side. Knee down, foot up. And let's bring it around. Keep that torso really flat. And then back down. One more time. If you need to readjust the ball, you can. Up. Keep squeezing that ball into the hamstring. Out to the side. Knee points forward. Foot comes down. Scoop that leg around. In underneath the chest. And then back down, let's reverse it. Knee comes up towards the chest, up and out to the side. Knee down, foot up, all the way around. Squeeze the glute and hamstring here, and then come back down. Super. Okay, change now, round to the other side. Rapidly, the tennis ball has not slipped down my leg, so it's always a good start because sometimes it goes they will. Hands in underneath the shoulders, knees in underneath the hips. Again, get that little bit of tension through the lower abdomen so it's nice and controlled. And we're going to squeeze that tennis ball into the thigh, into the back of the thigh. Lift the leg up, knee comes out. Let's drop the knee down, bring the knee pointing forward, anchor pointing back, and around up towards the elbow, in underneath the chest, and then back in underneath their hip. Reverse it again, so knee comes up towards our chest, lift up and out to the side. Nice guys, knee down, ankle up, lovely. If your hamstring cramps, that's normal and can happen. If you need to, you just take the ball out or you can go again. So leg comes back up into that kickback position, knee comes out to the side and then we tilt the leg so that the knee is pointing forward, ankle pointing back and we bring that leg around in underneath our torso, using the hip flexor to hug that thigh in, back into our starting position, and let's reverse it for the last time. Knee comes up towards the chest, lift up and out to the side, knee down, scoop that leg around into our kickback. Beautiful. And then come back down. Lovely. We're going to do a little bit of ankle work now. So we're going to do some ankle cars, those controlled articular rotations. And we'll also do some ankle pels and rails, and then we'll start into our full pose. So there's a lot of ankle work. In this, you want to make sure that they're nice and warm. So again, sitting nice and comfortably. You can have this knee bent or out to the side, whichever makes it more comfortable for you. We're working on our left leg. You want to get your left arm in underneath that left knee, kind of almost creating a shelf with it. Hold on to your uh, right bicep with your left hand. And then I like to put my right hand onto my left shin so that I can feel if that shin is moving. You want to keep this straight line of our shin not moving at all. So it's really, really steady and it's just the ankle moving. We're going to do these nice and slow. Point the toes down towards the ground and then let's start bringing that big toe in and around. Really be mindful of the shin bone moving here. Toes coming up now to point up towards 12 o'clock. Let's drop it out to the side. Slow this bit down. This is the part that most of us tend to be jumping in. So the slower the better of this and then point the toes down. Let's go out and back the way we came. Toes up to about 12 o'clock now, and then in towards the inside. Lovely, pointing down. Nice guys. And one more time, big toe comes in. Watch that shin bone moving, I just did a little jump there. And then the toes come up and around. And this is really hard for anyone. There's kind of a couple of different stages to this. If you've never done it before, sometimes the body's just like, what do you ask me to do? <laughs> As in like, it's forgotten that it can move in that way and have control in that way. So this is just about trying to create that mind-muscle connection again. And then other times, because we don't train a certain movement, we just become weak in it as well. So going slower helps you see if there's those little bits that you kind of jump through or feel sticky. And that gives you an indication, okay, that's a bit that I don't want to practice on. You can kind of drill down a little bit more. We're going to swap over onto the other side. Right arm under right knee, holding onto that left bicep, and then left hand onto the shin bone, just to make sure that it doesn't twist with the foot. We'll point the toes down, and then slowly, let's bring those toes out and around towards the inside. So bring it up towards 12. Nice and controlled, dropping it out towards the outside. Super nice. 
and pointing down. Let's slowly reverse it out towards the outside. Good, pulling those toes up towards 12. Nice controlled. Let's drop it towards the inside. And again, just notice if your foot starts pulling your shin down with it in particular places. And then we do that one more time. So for me on this foot, my shin bone very much likes to come along for the ride when I try and bring my toes in there. And that's because I've got an old injury. So <laughs> it's really good to try and isolate different parts of our bodies from each other and help control those parts through those movements. First set one more time. And then we're going to pull those toes up towards the ceiling. Drop it in towards the inside. Nice and controlled. Lovely. So what we're going to do next are pedals and rails, or what I call them push and pulls. What you want to think about, we've done these before in the last class, is we're going to be working on our ankle uh, dorsi flexion. So we're going to bring our ankle into that stretch. I want you to keep the heel down, and then we're going to think about trying to push the toes into the mat, and then try and peel them up, almost like we're trying to pull those toes up towards our shin. And we're going to go through different kind of iterations of that push, pull, push, pull. And I'm going to get you to ramp it up. So the first one will just be a little bit of a warm up one. I have to do it on my right so you can see a bit better. So kneeling whatever way is comfortable. And if kneeling like this isn't comfortable, you can place your foot up onto a chair or something higher in front of you, if that's more comfortable for you. So try and bring yourself as far as you can into that calf stretch, kind of like the knee to wall stretches that we do. Make sure that heel is pinned down on the ground. And then I want you to think about spreading the toes. I tend to put my hands out here for a little bit of couch balance, so you can have the hands in front or on the knee, whichever kind of feels more comfortable. And then what I want you to think about doing is pushing those toes down, almost like you're trying to do a calf raise on the mat. So we're lifting those, we're pushing those toes down as hard as we can. And then we're going to try and reverse it. I want you to think about digging the heel down now, and you're trying to kick in the muscles at the front of the shin to pull those toes up off the mat. It might not move. We're trying to keep our body in the same position. If you find that it does lift at all, that just means you've got a little bit more space to move forward on the next rep, which we're going to go into now. So a little bit harder now, I want you to push those toes down for five, four, three, two, one. Dig the heel down, pull those toes up towards the shin bone. Nice and strong for five, three, two, one. Last time now, push those toes down. We're going to go for 10, as hard as you can. Eight, seven, so it's like you're doing a massive calf raise, but you're blocked by your body. You can't actually lift that heel up. Keep pushing those toes down, 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 and then let's dig the heel down. Try and peel those toes up off the mat. Really feel the muscles in the front of the shin kick in. You might feel your hip flexor kick in in this position as well. Keep trying to peel. And then relax and just try and rest into that passive stretch. So again, you can place the hands on top of the knees here. We're not trying to create any tension through the ankle or through the foot. We're just kind of letting that stretch kick in at the back of the calf. And what this helps us do is build up active range in our ankle dorsiflexion, which is really important for running, really important for squatting and all of that. Okay, lovely. So we're gonna come slowly out of that. And then we'll change over onto the side. And again, you might notice a difference between your different angles. So just be mindful. Just because you could do something on one side doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to do it on the other. So bringing that foot into our dorsal flex position. So we're basically just trying to bring our knees over toes, but make sure that heel stays down. And again, it's going to be different for different people and different on different sides. We're just going to hold the stretch for another couple of seconds, and then we'll start doing our, our push and pulls as well. Again, make sure you're comfortable. So I like to put my hands out for a bit of counterbalance. We're going to start pushing those toes down, just kind of about 60%, trying to indent our toes and the ball of our foot into the mat. Now dig the heel down. We're going to reverse it. We're going to try and pull those toes up towards our shin bone, kick in the muscles at the front. And again, if there is any lifting, that just means you can move a little bit further forward into our next rep. So push those toes down for the second time now for five, four, three, two, one. Dig the heel down, try and pull those toes up a little bit harder now. So we're creating a little bit more tension through this. Try to wake up those muscles a bit more. Keep pulling, keep pulling. Lovely. And then last time we're going to do this for 10 seconds. Try and dig those toes down, foot down as hard as you can, as long as it's pain-free. 
keep pushing we've got another five four three two one dig the heel down try and peel those toes up off the mat especially that little toe you're trying to pull it up towards the outside of your shin and keep digging the heel down super guys we've got another three two one and then just relax there you can place the hands on top of the knees and just kind of relax into that passive stretch and again you might feel a stretch deeper on one side than on the other so for me right now my calf's getting a decent stretch on this side perfect and then we're going to slowly come out of that if you need to you can just do kind of some small little ankle circles if they're feeling a bit tighter a bit tender after that. Grab a little bit of water or coffee and we're going to go into our flow and we'll start at the top of our mat. Perfect. <clears throat> so I want you to have your feet around hip distance apart. If you need to get the toes slightly turned out. What we're going to do is a Jefferson curl down towards the mat. So we've done these ones before. We're going to tuck the chin and walk those hands down the legs. I'm trying to think about curling each section of that spine. So it's really nice and slow. And you can use your hands on your thighs for a bit of extra support. But we're trying to just tippy toe those fingers down inch by inch. Keep rounding through that lower back, pulling up through the abdomen. And then we start going into that hamstring stretch. I'm just going to hang here for a second or two. See if the hands will come down to the mat. If they can't, just bend the knees a little bit. And what we're going to do, we're going to go up onto our toes and then back onto our heels. So you just want to make sure the hands are there for a little bit of balance. We're going to lift the heels up and come up into a calf raise on the toes. Some of you guys have done this before with me. And then we're going to rock back, weight on the heels and try and lift the toes up. So we're just going through the same sort of movement pattern we just did there with our cards. Rock forward, up onto our toes, lift the heels. Hands are there for balance. You can have the knees bent if you need to for these. Rock back onto the heels, lift the toes up. And then we're going to do that one more time. Toes, let's lift the heels. And then rock back. Heels, let's lift the toes. And then you can place the toes down. If you need to, walk the feet out towards the edge of the mat and then we're going to come down into a deep squat here. With this as well, I'm just going to get you to rock over to one side. You can let that heel lift up a little bit, but we're trying to get a nice stretch onto the back of the calf. Rock over onto the other side and then come back in towards the centre. Rock over to the one side. So you can let that heel come up. You're trying to get a nice stretch on the back of the calf. Good. And then while we're here, elbows inside, the thighs sitting up nice and tall. And then we're going to do that rotation. So we're just going to get ourselves warmed up for all the rotations in the class. So lift that right hand up towards the ceiling. Nice big stretch. Try and push that left elbow in towards your left thigh. Come back down and change your front to the side. Right hand down, left hand up. Reach, twist. And then come back down. We're going to tuck the chin, push the hips up. So into a little bit of a cook squat. You just stay here to hamstring stretch. And then come back down. We're going to do that again. So left hand down, right hand up. Push that left elbow inside the right thigh. Or left thigh, excuse me. Be pretty impressive. <laughs> Come back down, right hand down, left hand up, reach, twist. Bring that left hand down, tuck the chin, push the hips back up into that hamstring stretch again. And then we're going to come down into our deep squat or a deep ape. We're going to do some reaching to open apes. So we're going to do this later on in the, the drill as well. So we're going to bring those hands together, back of the hands together as we curve forward as if I'm trying to dive into that floor. This is reaching. We're going to go to op, open eight. So I come up onto my toes if I can. Stay nice and low on my heels. My hips are close to the heels and those hands are coming out to the side and I'm reaching. Almost as two people are trying to pull my hands away. Return to reach. Back of the hands come together. I drop my heels down and I curve forward into that reaching position. Lovely. Really trying to keep ears inside the biceps for this. And then I'm going to let those hands come down, tuck the chin, push the hips back up. Let's walk the feet back in towards the centre. So I want those feet in towards each other. And let's curl back up. And then we're going to go into some chair pose with the rotation. So 
Turquoise, thighs together. Let's sit back and down. If you're comfortable here then, hands can come together and your left elbow is going to try and hook outside your right thigh. And you're trying to push that left elbow into the right thigh and twist out to the side. So just if people want to see from the front, it's like this, and then I'm bringing the elbow outside. I'm going to try and open up those hands so my right hand goes up towards the ceiling, left hand down to the ground. And then I bring those hands back together. I'm going to do that again, reach up and open those hands. Nice. Come back in. Let's do that one more time. Open. Come back into that prayer position. I'm just going to shimmy around so we're all together. And then I'm going to rotate my torso, hands onto the mat. Straighten those legs if I can. I'm going to come up into that half lift and then come back down and step back with my right leg. Drop the right leg down to the ground and we're going to go into a window. So my left hand comes up and I reach back and around up towards the ceiling and then come back down. I'm going to do that two more times but we're just going to add in a bit more of a rotation. So left hand comes up towards the ceiling. Then I rotate that arm and bring that hand in behind my right so I'm just trying to open up my chest and shoulder a little bit more. Straighten that arm, bring it up overhead, back down to the mat. We're going to do that one more time. Left hand comes up and out to the side, reaches towards the ceiling, rotate that palm, try and get it in behind the right hip, opening up that chest out towards the left hand side. Hand comes back up, down towards the mat. You can keep the back knee down on this. We're going to come up into a lunge position. Hands into prayer position again, and let's hook that right elbow into left knee. If you want, you can straighten that back leg and come up into a high lunge, or you can keep that knee down. But just keep trying to twist and bring that chest up and out to the left hand side. You're gonna slowly release that, hands come back down to the mat. You're gonna step back with that left foot, Let's lower down into a plank position so you can have the knees down on the ground to lower yourself down if you need to. Up into an upward dog or a cobra so you can keep the feet flat or curled under if you want. Tuck the chin, push the ground away. We're back into a downward dog. If you want here, you can just kind of bend the knees, drop that chest down to get a little bit more of a thoracic opening here. And then let's step forward with that left foot. Back into our lunge. Lovely, come back up into that standing position. Reach up overhead and we're going to do the same on the other side. So feet together, we're going to go into that chair pose first. Sit back and down as if sitting into a chair and then right elbow is going to hook out towards the left hand side. If that's too hard, you can just stay in chair pose like this, hands out in front of you. And again, we're going to try and open the hands. So right hand goes down towards the mat, left hand goes up. Bring them back into a prayer, prayer position. Try and open the hands again. Come back into a prayer position and one more time. Reach, open, back into the prayer. Let's twist our torso so we're facing down towards the mat. Hands on top of the mat again. Hips straighten. Let's go up into a half lift. Lower back down. We're going to step back. Sorry, with our left foot this time. Like that. Drop that left knee down if you need to. And then we're going to rotate that right hand up towards the ceiling into that windmill, lovely, come back down. Reach the right hand up towards the ceiling again. Let's twist that arm, bring it back so our right hand is hooking towards the left hip and try and roll that shoulder back so we're opening up the shoulder and the chest. Straighten the arm, come back up towards the ceiling, back down towards the mat, let's do that one more time. Right hand comes up, reaches, rotates and tries to hook in behind that left hip. Super stuff. Straighten that arm, reach up overhead and back down. We're going to come up into that lunge position. Hands inside the chest again in that prayer position. Hook the left elbow inside the right thigh and just try and twist. If you want, if you're used to this movement, you can straighten that back leg and lift up. And just keep trying to twist around. So with each exhale, you're just trying to go a little bit deeper. Lovely, and then relax that. Hands come back down to the mat. Lift up that back knee off the mat. We're going to step back with our right foot. 
lower down towards the mat, push up either into a cobra or an upward dog, so you can stay up on your toes or thighs flat on the mat, push back into a downward dog. And we're going to do the same because we're going to wake up our thoracic spine, so bend the knees, try and drop that chest down. And we're trying to think about rolling the shoulders out to the outside, so your arm is trying to rotate out towards the outside. And then come out of that, we're going to step forward with our right leg, forward with our left. And then slowly let's roll the spine back up into a standing position. If you want, you can reach the hands up overhead, interlace the fingers and push up towards the ceiling, just to get a bit of a stretch, a little bit of a side bend. Just going to do what feels good. And then slowly come out of that. What we're going to do is a couple of reverse lunges into calf raises. So I'll just quickly down this, we're going to reverse lunge back come back in towards centre if you need to, put that foot down and then try and calf raise on that left hand side. So we're going to do a lot of single leg balance work here. So we'll all do this together. Left foot down, right foot up, up, let's lunge back. Come back in and calf raise on the left foot. Back down, lunge again. Back in, calf raise. Ooh. Back down, lost my answer. <laughs> come back in, one more time, calf raise. And then what I want you to do is go into what's called warrior three. So you're going to push that leg back. It's almost like a single leg RDL. Yeah. And then we're going to step back with that right foot up into a high lunge, so reach. And then we're going to bring that right hand forward, left hand back. Bring your left hand to the back of your right thigh. And we're going to reach that hand up towards the ceiling. So your right hand's reaching up. You get a nice big stretch into your right hip flexor. Bring those hands back in towards the twisted position. We're going to come back in towards the centre, rotate this back foot down. So now your right toes are kind of pointing out to the side, right hand slides down the thigh and lift that left hand up. So for any of the yogis, this peaceful warrior. And now we're going to go into humble warrior. So we're coming back up, interlace those fingers behind your hands, squeeze the shoulder blades together and then try and drop forward, almost bringing your head in line with that left foot. Super guys, slowly coming back up. We're gonna rotate so the hips are pointing forward, we're up onto our back foot, and then coming into that standing position. We'll do the whole sequence again on the other side. So stepping back with that left leg, coming forward if you need to, left foot is on the mat, and we calf raise up on that right foot, just trying to strengthen up the feet, especially if you're doing Jamie's running programs. <laughs> Strong feet are gonna be essential, lift up, and back down, one more time. Up into that calf raise, and then let's go forward into that warrior three, trying to reach forward with the hands, back of the leg. Step back into that lunge, reach up towards the ceiling, and then left hand goes forward, right hand back. So we're trying to twist through the torso, yeah, exactly, perfect. And then right hand to left thigh, reach back and up, Get a nice big stretch. So you're trying to go hand to opposite leg and then you're trying to get a nice big stretch all day before that left hip flexor. We're going to come back in towards the centre, rotate on that back foot. So now you're facing out towards the left hand side. Hands up and then we're going to drop the left hand down the left leg, reach the right hand up towards the ceiling. We're going to come back towards centre, hands in behind your back, interlace those fingers, squeeze the shoulder blades together, and then try and keep the hips steady. So try not let the bum poke back and just try and fold forward then. Try to bring that head almost towards your right foot. Take a breath or two here. So you might feel this in the thigh working. It's good for the old, the old glutes and the thighs. We're going to come back up in towards the centre, pivot on that back foot. Let's come back up into our standing position and then walk those hands down towards the mat and we're going to interim those feet back into a downward top position. Just drop those knees down into a child's pose. I'm going to quickly demo what we're going to do as a bit of a pulse raiser and um, to get the heart rate up and I'll show a demo as well or an alternate for this as well. So ideally what we're going to do is load a beast, pop it forward into a deep ape Hands come back down, step, step, loaded beast, pop it forward into deep ape, step, step. If you need to, loaded beast, step it forward, step it forward, 
up, hands down. So you can step the whole way or you can pop both ways if you want. I'm gonna step back because I don't know my neighbors otherwise. And then once we do three to four of those, we're gonna go back into our deep eights to reaching to deep or to reaching eights and then to open. If that doesn't work for you, you can just go into those cook squats with rotation two on each side. So we'll all go back into that loaded beast position. Sink the hips back, take a nice big breath. And then let's try and open up those hips, pop forward or step forward into our deep eight, hands up, hands down, step back, step back. Sink the hips back into the beast, pop forward, hands up. Good guys, again, step forward if you need to, hands back. And let's do that two more times. Hands down, step back, step back. And then we're into our deep eight, let's reach. Hands come together, curl down. Toes stay down, we lift the heels up, we're into open ape. Return to reach. Again, you can do your cook squat with rotation if you need to here. Come back up onto your toes, reach out towards the side. Back into reaching, hands come down towards the mat. Step back with our left foot, right foot, and then push those hips back into a child's pose. Just take a rest here. Your thighs will probably be burning, especially if you guys are doing lower yesterday. So just take a little breather. Breathe in and then breathe out. We're going to do a little bit of thoracic work here. So what I want you to do is just make sure you're comfortable. So if you want your knees can be out to the side or your knees can be in underneath your chest. We're going to reach those hands forward. And what we're going to do is try and open up our shoulders, push and pull like this into the mat. So maybe you guys might have done this before me. You guys can go into a puppy pose where we're a little bit further forward, your hands are on the mat, and we're lifting up. I just want you to make sure that you're engaging your lower abdomen if you're doing that, so you don't feel it in your lower back at all. Drop the head down. And in whatever position you're in, we're gonna try and lift up onto our fingertips, squeeze the shoulder blades, and try and drop that chest down. Ideally, your head should be down. I'm just gonna face it to the side so you guys can hear me properly. And then what I want you to do is flatten the hands into the mat, elbows into the mat, push those hands away, and you're trying to spread the shoulder blades, lift up through that upper body as if someone's got your chest on a hook and is trying to pull you up towards the ceiling. Spread the shoulder blades, tuck the chin, around in that upper section of our spine. And then let's drop the chest down, lift up onto those fingertips, and squeeze the shoulder blades together to try and open up those armpits out to the side. So we're trying to go into thoracic extension here. Keep squeezing, so we're being really nice and active through this. Hands and elbows go back down flat on the mat. Let's push those elbows and hands into the mat, spread the shoulder blades, tuck the chin, round through that upper section of the spine. Holding for a few more seconds. And then up onto the fingertips again, squeeze the shoulder blades together, try and drop that chest down a little bit more. If, if you're feeling quite flexible, you can even drop the chin down and look forward. Otherwise, forehead just kind of hopping an inch off the ground. Super. One more time. Elbows down, palms down. Push those hands into the mat. Spread the shoulder blades round to that upper section of the spine. So it's very similar to what we were doing with our thoracic cards. Keep spreading, keep spreading. And then up onto the fingertips for the last time. Squeeze our shoulder blades together, trying to wrap the armpits up and out to the side. So we're really trying to drop that chest down. Activate all those muscles in the back of our shoulders and open up our chest, our lats, and our pecs. And then just take a rest here. So again, you can walk if you want to, if you're not in a child's pose, you can sink back into a child's pose or you can stay in that puppy pose and just drop the chest down. Take a rest here. Take a couple of nice deep breaths. And then we're going to walk the hands back up into a kneeling position. So if kneeling isn't comfortable for you, you can grab a little pillow in underneath um, so to kind of prop your hips up. I'm going to quickly just show you what we're going to do. If this is deep enough for you and you're getting a stretch along the front of your shins, that's totally fine, you can stay there. If it's not, 
hands beside your knees. We're going to lift the knees up towards the chest, get a big stretch along the front of the toes and the feet. We're then going to come up into a camel position. And again, if you can't do full camel, just hands into the tailbone, squeeze the shoulders, chest up, and then come back down. We're going to do a couple of rotations of this. So into that kneeling position, hands on either side of your knees. Push the man away, try and lean back on left those feet. Get a really nice deep stretch in the front of the toes, front of the foot. Again, this might be a little bit uncomfortable for some of us. We want to stretch, we just don't want pain. Bringing that down then. Hips up. Reach back if you can towards your heels. We're going to go into that camel position. Squeeze the shoulder blade, turn around through that upper back. Open up the chest, squeeze the glutes. You get a nice big stretch. If you can't do this, hands into the lower back, into the tailbone, squeeze the shoulder blades together and just try and open up the chest that way. Lovely. We're going to come back down into the front of the leg stretch again. So hands beside either knee, lean back and push. You're trying to pull those knees with your hip flexors up towards your chest. Get a deep stretch again. Some of us may only be here. Some of us may just be in the kneeling position and that's enough of a stretch for us. That's totally fine. And then coming back up. Again, we've got the different options if you want into our camel here. If you need to, you can either do this variation as well. If the standing one or the kneeling one doesn't feel good. Or if you can do full camel, hands towards the heels, squeeze the shoulder blades together. And just really trying to think about opening up the chest. Lovely. And then come back down slowly out of that. I'm going to get you guys to come over and lie on your backs on the mat. So I'm going to do a little bit of a final twist and a glute stretch. This is a personal fave. I'm going to get you to cross your left ankle over your right knee. Pull that right thigh in towards your chest. If you're finding that your head is really lifting, you can't relax that head down onto the mat, just try and get some pillows to prop yourself up because I want you guys to kind of relax into this pose. While you're here, you can do a couple of ankle cars, so those circles that we did before on your right leg. So just do a couple of, couple of circles and just really feel that nice stretch into your left hip. And then what I'm going to get you to do is place that right foot back in on the mat. I want you to almost bring that left knee pointing towards your face. And then again, if you need to, you can use pillows for this, but we're going to try and drop those hips out towards the outside. And that left knee should be pointing up, almost kind of in line with your shoulder this direction. You're trying to keep that left shoulder back and down. And if this feels relatively easy, what you can do is take the right foot in your left hand. So we're going into a bit of a quad stretch as well. Some of you guys have done this with me before and then we're rolling that left shoulder back and down. And we're just doing a really nice rotation. And then just what I want you to do here is just focus on your breathing. So first, just take a couple of deep breaths, just trying to connect in with it. And you might even find that your left shoulder lifts up off the mat when you inhale and that rib cage expands and then softens back down towards the mat when you exhale. I want you to breathe in for a count of three and then breathe out for a count of five. Breathe in again for three and breathe out for a count of five. Taking one more breath and breathing out. Slowly release that bottom foot. Bring your foot back to the mat. We're going to come in towards the center and then change over onto your other leg. So cross the right leg over your left foot. Hold that leg in. And again, if you can't do this, you can just stay in this position here. So if I'm being honest, I'm slightly injured on this side and I shouldn't be doing that stretch. So <laughs> this is your alternate if you are similar to me and can't go into that glute stretch for whatever reason. Just try and push that right thigh away and try and get a bit of a stretch into this. hips. If you are in the full stretch, just doing those ankle cars with that left foot again. 
And then what we're gonna do is try and point that knee up towards our head again, towards our face, to the right knee, and then drop those eight towards the side. Try and keep that right shoulder back and down so we're really trying to get a nice rotation through the side of our torso. And then you might also get a nice deep stretch into the side of that right glute. If that feels comfortable, you can take your left foot with your right hand and try and think about rolling that right shoulder back and down to the mat. And then you're very gently using your left hand to kind of pull that right knee down towards the ground. I just want you to focus on that breathing again. And now we're going to breathe in for four and then out for six. So take a deep breath in. Stomach, stomach expands. And then slowly exhale. Breathing in for four. And slowly out for six. We're just taking one or two more breaths in your own time here. Feel the ribcage expand when you inhale. And then contract when you exhale. And then you're going to slowly release that left foot with the right hand. Bring the legs in towards the centre. <clears throat> you can hug yourselves in towards your chest. If anyone wants to, they can go into a quick happy baby pose where you take the outside of your feet in those hands and your knees are outside the elbows. You can just try and almost imagine that those knees are getting pulled down to the ground into a nice deep stretch. If this isn't comfortable to stay holding onto the shins or holding your knees in towards your chest. In whatever position you're in, take one last deep inhale. So try and take the biggest inhale that you have. Relax everything and then longest exhale that you can do. And then really nice big deep inhale. On the exhale, just release those feet down towards the ground. You're going to roll over onto your side. Push yourselves up into a seated position. And we're finished. Thursday movement to my week. Done.